Ready for a women forward car dealership? Rudy Luther Toyota empowers their many women on staff in sales, management, and service. Whether you are looking for a new Toyota or pre owned vehicle, Rudy Luther Toyota has something for everyone. Every vehicle comes with a Luther Advantage. 10 cents off fuel and car wash discounts at holiday stations, Luther Advantage warranty, and five day return policy on pre owned vehicles. Located just five minutes west of downtown Minneapolis, off 394 and General Mills Boulevard. And they're also hiring. Want to join the team but don't know where to start? Visit RudyLutherToyota.com today. Hi, everybody. This is Don Mitchell, and welcome to Don of Sports. This week, we have a great guest, Deanna Hutton, who is the brand new owner of the new arena football team here in Minnesota, set to debut its home game May 5th is called Minnesota Myth. So we're going to talk to Deanna, learn all about her new baby project, and you guys get ready for a fun summer. Yes, welcome back to Dawn of Sports. Uh, We are very busy these days. I just took a trip with my wife's school uh, to Central Europe. I went to Austria and Germany. Now Dawn is off on her own travels. Where are you going, Dawn? I'm going to France. We're going to go to Paris for a couple of days and then take trains down to Bordeaux, the south of France, kind of kick back and relax. It's the longest trip I've taken since I've been here in Minnesota. So I'm, I'm really excited. And Jim, I am going to see um, a soccer game in France, in Paris. So Tiana Harris, who used to play for Minnesota Aurora yes. is out there right now. And she, she is playing the days that I'm there. So she's like, Oh my gosh, really? I think they love when anyone stateside comes uh, in. So uh, yeah, I'm so excited to see a game. So she plays for um, Fleury FC and uh, hopefully uh, come out the victor too. I'll take, I'll take some picks. Please do. Yeah. I did a column on Tiana uh, probably last summer, right, right at the beginning of the season. She ended up having a great season. Now she's graduated to playing professionally. It's a great story. Uh, and, you know, and we're about to tell you about another great story that involves a strong woman. Well, our awesome guest this week is Deanna Hutton, and you will soon know about her team coming up in April and especially so at the home opener in May. She not only is a awesome local lawyer here in town and cigar lounge owner, I don't have cigars, Deanna, but um, more importantly, Minnesota myth. If you have missed arena football, it is coming back with a vengeance. And Deanna Hutton is joining us today. She is the owner of Minnesota myth. Deanna, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Dawn. I know you and I have talked. We already, um, we did a story a while ago and this has just got me even more excited. And I, I, I love Jim's opinion on this too, because arena football for me, and you know, I call it this, it's rock and roll football. It is just a good time. It's faster. It, the whole crowd gets involved. What made you want to, first of all, be a team owner and then kind of resurrect it into what is going to be? Yes. Well, I mean, this opportunity, when it came to my lab, I knew that I had to have it. I knew that I had to jump to the gun and, and do this. Um, like you said, I am a lawyer by trade. I did own a um, cigar lounge. I don't have it anymore. I sold it. And just, uh, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And I remember years ago when I was um, dating my now husband, um, we, were ta- we were watching football. We were watching the Patriots. And he was like, if you were to play football, what position would you play? And I w- immediately, without even thinking, I was like, owner. He's like, that's not a position. <laughs> no, that is a key position. If you don't have a good leadership, like if you, you don't have a good leadership, you don't have anything. So when this opportunity presented, I was like, yeah, why not? I can do this. What I love, too, is you're blazing a trail. The first Latina majority owner in league history. You are a powerhouse um, and you're bringing a little flair yes. to it. Like you are you are well, first, you and I talked earlier. If you guys. Well, first, yes, go ahead. Sorry, I'm not the majority owner. I'm sole owner. This is mine. Yes. Yeah, mine and owner. mine alone. <laughs> 
Everyone back <laughs> up. Yeah. Someone said that to me. They said, you know, she's not the sole owner. She's majority owner. I'm like, well, when I had, I sat down and talked to her before. I didn't know that. So thank you. <laughs> Someone had said that. And I'm like, mm, I don't, the, the way I'm seeing it when we chatted the first time is this is her it baby. It is. And it is an and, awesome baby. Well, yeah. good. So let me ask you this. When people say that to you, and I know you and I joked around that you were kind of like the Rebecca of Ted <laughs> yes. Lasso, um, you're putting your your thumbprint on it. How how exciting has it been since last we talked that this is really coming to fruition? It's so bizarre seeing how everything has fallen into place. It has been an uphill battle. It has been um, quite a lot of work, but while this is like ownership wise, it is my baby. I have an amazing team of coaches, front office, dancers, everyone who is making this come true. So while it is mine, it's really also my team's effort and my team's vision and, and their hard work that are pouring into this project. And I, I'm so thankful that they um they trusted me with this because it's it's not easy. I mean, we're building this from the ground up from zero. So um I I'm so thankful that they trusted me with their with their skills and talents to put this together. And one of the hardest decisions you had to make at the the jump is who do I get for my head coach? And you look to Ricky Foggy. How was yes. that? And and how did that I come? I mean, it was kind about? of a no brainer. First, when I took um, over this team, I definitely wanted to tap into Minnesota talent because there's a lot of talent of all sorts in Minnesota. So while Obviously, I, I also looked at other people from other states when I talked to Ricky. I mean, he's a legend in Minnesota um, and he has amazing experience, not only in football, but in arena football. And he's such a great guy. You know him. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's amazing. He's extremely skilled at what he does. So it was a great fit. And I'm also all about vibing with people. So not only is he skilled and talented, but his personality match matches very well, like the entire team. So, yeah, he's a riot. He's funny, but he's also serious about oh, his yeah. football. So you get that two together, and yes, it's perfect. When it, when it comes to football, like you should have seen him at the combine. It was like a machine. So he's great. We're very excited to have him. You know, you jump into this and you, you love it. And you know, your first thing is I want to be an owner. I don't, there's no other position I want to be. What has been maybe the biggest surprise for you in the past few months, um, owning this team and trying to build it? The amount of work that it requires to have a team. I, people really don't know how many balls were juggling up in the air, how many little details you have to take into consideration to put this, this show, this game together. It, there's so many factors, so many people that have to, to contribute to this. So honestly, I would have never thought like the ins and the outs of, of a football team, of a professional football team. That has been the biggest surprise things that I'm like, I would have never thought about that, but yeah, let's do it. Like we need it. We have it. I, I, I'm interested in the mindset of starting a team in this market because this market is a medium sized market. It, it has everything, yes. has every major sport, has big 10, has PWHL, has the Minnesota Aurora, has a great women's mm -hmm. basketball team, uh, has great high school sports. And so do you view all that's happening in this market as competition or as uh, a good sign that this, this market will support even. That's a great team. question. Um, I do think we are not a competition to absolutely anybody. We are here to complement the great Minnesota sports atmosphere that we have, because there's a reason that we have every single team. So as long as the product and the product has the quality and integrity that fans will like. Fans, I truly believe that they will consume it. So we are here to just plug ourselves in into this amazing sports atmosphere that is already here in Minnesota. Minnesota loves a, a, 
sports. We love a good time. We like to party, and this is great because we're gonna we're gonna um, do this in the summer. So we we are just coming in here to provide a little bit of a think of a Sunday, like a little bit of a cherry on top to an amazing group well, of teams that we already have. So we're actually well, we're actually st- thrilled to be part of this this amazing group of teams that we already have. You're, it's also very smart to play your sport in the summer because football fans don't have anything else to turn to in the summer and not everybody likes baseball. And, and there's a, you know, you have a captive audience. In yes, the exactly. So for example, a lot of people, when this league was coming back, they're like, Oh, they're trying to compete with the NFL. Absolutely not. We are trying to just provide content for avid football fans that, like you said, have nothing to do during the summer and actually that's the reason why the league partner with the nfl in this amazing media deal that we have that all of our games are going to be streamed in the nfl network so that's the reason we're not competing we're partnering this is all about providing the viewers with amazing content Talk about a huge get to partner with the NFL Network and to have those games streamed. That's that's like a dream for anything starting up, isn't know, it? Especially for for the first season. But honestly, this I'm very proud to be a part of this league. While the AFL, as you mentioned before, is coming back, this new organization, this new leadership, has a completely different uh, mindset. And they really want to provide this integrity and quality in the content in the content for viewers to be like, yeah, we are being seen, we are being entertained, and we love this. So I'm I'm very thankful to be part of this particular organization. Now, if people are now getting their appetites wet for some uh, rock and roll football, as I call it, this Arena League football is awesome. I've missed it over the past few years. I think the last one I saw was the Milwaukee Mustangs eons ago. That's a kind of, you know, throwing a date out there on myself. <laughs> but some key dates for you is Saturday, April 27th on the road. Minnesota Myth opens their schedule at Nashville, but the home opener At Target Center, all the games are going to be at Target Center, May 5th versus Philadelphia, Sunday fun day, 5 o'clock. So all of you people, they'll be like, well, I got to go to, you know, I got the Sunday scaries, (laughs) 5 o'clock. You can go, you can have fun, then you can get home and then get ready for Monday. It's like the perfect schedule, isn't it, Yes, and actually it's um, Cinco de Mayo that is a Mexican holiday. Who doesn't love tacos and margaritas, right? Um, so we do want exactly. to to have every game that, yes, while the, the show, the main show is a football game, we want to make this um, an experience for people. So with activities to do before the concert, very family oriented. Um, and, and, and we also are partnering with the city of Minneapolis. We're working hand in hand with them to bring this vibe back to to downtown Minneapolis because I feel like also there's a lot of uh, misconception of the safety of downtown Minneapolis. I work there. I go there every day. And yes, it, it doesn't have the same foot traffic as before, but it's it's a great city. And that's why we when we were looking for an arena, we we're like, it has to be Minneapolis. It's it's where we work, is where we are and we want to be a part of this amazing community. So we want everybody to come in and rally up and, and support this this team and the amazing athletes that we have. You're going to be surprised. It's going to be so much fun. So I knew, I knew there was talk about tailgating. Is that still on the yes, table? Yes, we are working on that. And, yes. uh, and that's the reason why, obviously, we are not doing this by ourselves. We are partnering with the city of Minneapolis, with downtown Minneapolis council, with the police precinct, with, we are doing this as a team because we are part of a community. And that is what also part of the vision and the mission of, of this, um, of this team. It's not just about selling tickets to a football game. This is about engaging the community to, to bring Minneapolis back and to support small businesses, uh, both Latino and non-Latino, um, in, in a fun way. 
Um, so I, I love to ask this question because uh, as a woman in business, and especially if your friends or your family are kind of in the same business, you have to have the family hat, the <laughs> friend hat, and the business hat, and your husband, Lee Hutton, is the commissioner. So how do those conversations go when you have to wear the owner hat and then you have to wear the wife hat and you also work with them, the lawyer hat? Um, handling that is skillful for sure. Yeah, it's a handful. Um I have an amazing husband. Honestly, <laughs> our relationship is based in a lot of respect and mutual admiration for what we do. So that does help. However, does that doesn't prevent for little arguments or even some big arguments <laughs> to happen because he treats me the same way that he treats the rest of the owners. I have zero preferential treatment that I know it's hard for people to believe. But one of the discussions that we had before I, I decided to take ownership of the of the team was that it was like, how are we going to do this? Because also the AFL is his baby and his project and he's doing an amazing job. So this was um, all about partnering into doing something amazing for ourselves as well, not only as a couple, but just this challenge that we put upon ourselves of doing this. So it has, it has been good, but eh, yeah, there's a little bit of yelling here and there and it happens, <laughs> you know? Well, you know, you're fiery, right? That's going to happen anyway. You have to have your yeah. opinion. I'm, yeah, right. I'm going to voice right. my opinion and I'm going to say it. So, but it, it has been good working with them. And um, just to introduce you to some people, some background on you from Mexico City, can you give us the kind of the um, the path, if you will, to get here to yeah, Minnesota? Yeah, so born and raised in Mexico City, um, a lawyer by trade. In Mexico, you go straight from high school to law school, um, and you're highly encouraged to oh. go to go to wow. work since your first semester. So I started working at a law firm when I was 18 years old. Um, Graduated when I was 22, kept on working, and then I decided to come to the U.S. to get my master's degree. And I had um, other universities that I was considering, but Minnesota gave me um, a really good scholarship. So like I said, I'm, I'm all about everything happens for a reason. And I came here, I have to admit, first winter for me, it was brutal. I didn't know how to dress <laughs> appropriately for winter. I didn't know what kind of shoes. Like, I, I really thought I could still wear stilettos. Like, how dumb. Um, trust me, I was like... <laughs> In your bag at the office. It, I right? mean, it was, it was an experience. So um, I graduated from the university. And I was supposed to go back to Mexico City. And then, I don't know, something happened. Things starting... Uh, falling into place. And I decided to stay and I bought the cigar lounge. And actually, a lot of people think that I stayed here because I met Lee and I fell in love. And no, actually, I met Lee after um, I had bought the, the cigar lounge. Oh. So it was just a happy coincidence. And then I fell in love, got married. And now this is home. This was almost 11 years ago. Wow. Minnesota sucks yeah. you in, man. Let me tell you, right? That next thing you know, you'll be like me. You're here like 20 years. You're like, well, how did that yeah. happen? But it's been great, it has right? Been. The winters, like I said, I'm still like, well, why am I living here? The cold hurts my face. Um, but now, now this is home. And we have an amazing community, honestly. And so I don't regret. I don't regret it. Well, I want to thank you for being a powerful woman. And I know that in your career, too, you must have had to fight through a lot of things because if people don't know, Deanna is like a model, oh by the way. You look at her and you're like, is this the model? Um, and, and you're brilliant. So the whole package, as people like to say, um, that means you really have to you have to take that fiery Latina attitude with you, probably surging through the beginning of business for sure. Well, this is who I am. This is what I look look like it's what it is um however yeah i ever since i was in law school i've been a woman in male dominated industries the cigar industry exactly the same i remember my first cigar trade show some cigar representatives wouldn't talk to me because they thought lee was the 
the owner of of the shop. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of still, um, sexism in male dominated industries, but Hey, if it, somebody has to, to do it. And while there are amazing women in the sports industry, both in the field and, um, as executives or coaches, there's still a long pathway to, to go. And there's still a lot of work to do, to be done, um, to have more women because women, we do have the talent. That doesn't mean that men don't, but there, there's a way to work together to make things better. And that's what I'm trying to do this, this year. And I want young girls to be like, Actually, I I can also be an, I don't have to only be a dancer, which we have an amazing group of dancers, super accomplished young women. But also, I think I, I told you this, we're going to have a female kicker uh, playing oh, yes, with us. that's so right. This is not only for men anymore. And this is really not to take anything away from men athletes and in male executives no but there's there's room for everyone i can assure you that oh that's awesome well before i i, I let you go i want to, you to explain um the background of your mascot um so that when people hit the ground running and they go to target center they're like oh yeah that's the cool <laughs> one yeah so um i wanted to pay homage to my culture mexican culture um, there's a lot of misconceptions of, of our culture, but it's not all, all real. So when it came time to develop the mascot, the logo, kind of like the vibe of, of the team, I knew I had to do an alebrije. I've always loved alebrijes. So an alebrije is a mythical figure in Mexican culture. It's associated with the Day of the Dead. So if, if you guys have watched the movie Coco, which I think it, it's beautiful, you're gonna see. Love you're gonna Coco. see alebrijes there. Like you have this this big um, tiger flying in to save the kid, and and the alebrijes are supposed to be your spirit animal, your spirit guide, and it's a combination of different animals. And like because like people, our personalities are a combination of different things that happen in your life and your upbringing. So in this case, we knew months ago that we were going to play in target center so we wanted to pay also homage to the timberwolves which are an amazing team and we are so delighted to to play in the same arena have them as our co-tenants um so that's why it's a (laughs) wolf with lion tail because the lion is the king of the jungle and with wing tails with wing sorry wings um that are obviously because the eagle is the king of the skies and kind of like a little bit of a um, very um, feline um, face yes. to pay homage to the lynx. So this is why, and his name is King Lobo, L-O-B-O. Lobo is Spanish for wolf. So Yes, Los yes. Lobos. That used to be the lynx oh, yeah. cheer, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Also a great, also one of the great bands in oh, American history. Oh, for sure. That's right. The Bamba, Jim. right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, they, they do everything. Yes. Uh, La Bamba was one of the great yeah. covers, but one of my favorite <laughs> bands. You, you should go back. You should go listen to Los Lobos. They are Actually, great. Actually, Lee great was band. showing me some, some videos of them in YouTube like two days ago. Yeah. So, so that's yes. why we wanted to. Our, our spirit animal, King Lobo, is the king of everything and that's why we want we wanted that vibe of yes we can do this we fight we scream we we conquer well diana uh, first of all i want to thank you for taking the time you're a very busy person i appreciate you spending time with us today second of all uh we love definitely love to have you back. I, we love the fact that women's sports are growing and growing in this marketplace. The, we love the Aurora. We love what PHWL local mm-hmm. team is doing. Uh, so, so I just want to say congratulations and I uh, hope we get to talk to you Absolutely. again. Absolutely. I'll be happy to come back whenever you will invite me. And for everyone out there, please go to um, mnmyth.com. We have our schedule. We have merch. We have some news. Uh, training camp is starts April 1st, so we're very excited about, about that. And yes, come come to Target and 
have a great experience with us. Target Center. <laughs> oh, and I'm so happy that there's a female kicker on that men's team yes. there. So power to the people too. Class so this is going to be awesome. <laughs> That's right. All right. All right, Deanna Hutton, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited for Minnesota Myth to come. It's going to be a fun summer. And uh, I just think this is going to be huge. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you guys. 